Hello and welcome. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and it's my pleasure to walk you through my top five favorite features of the brand new Adobe Illustrator CC. Now, Illustrator CC, the CC stands for Creative Cloud, is a brand new version with new features that are just phenomenal. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I've got an image open here with multiple artboards and kind of just we're putting together this island adventure, the wild isles, and of course these are all Illustrator vector objects. But let's take a look at my first uh, new favorite top five feature. I'm gonna bounce over to uh, artboard number two. And we kind of have this object that's stroked and we have an object that's stroked kind of with a nice border around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this object. And this is what makes up that border. Then I'm gonna head over to my brushes panel and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it in. And it's gonna ask me what kind of brush do I wanna make? Now this isn't a new feature. Here's the new part. Let's go to our pattern brush, let's click okay. And what's new about this is you could have made pattern brushes before, but how you dealt with the corners was the issue. So now Illustrator CC is automatically generating these corners based on the original artwork. And I have choices. I can choose between which corner style that I want. And of course I can always bring in my own corner. So I kind of like this one better where it kind of sticks out more. So again, that's the auto outer corner, but what about the inner corners when the object, when the uh, shape is coming inward? And again, once again, I can choose between any of these auto generated um, inside or inner corners. And uh, once again, I can choose whichever kind I like or put in my own. So that is my first favorite feature is that with a pattern brush, I now have the ability to choose what kind of corner is going to apply to my objects. So I can go in and we can see some other examples of this. Here's one where we've got some nice corners in. Uh, we've got the one uh, that I did earlier. Uh, here's a different one. Here's the one that I did. Actually, that's not one that I did. Let's go to the one that I did. There's the one that I did. And we probably want to bring the point size of that down just a tad bit, maybe down that much. There we go. So kind of cool to be able to do that automatically with the new Illustrator CC. All right, let's jump to my next artboard and we're gonna take it up a notch. Now, Illustrator has always been able to create these brushes with vector objects. So things you have to draw or trace. But what about bitmaps? For example, uh, these two objects, this and this, are actually bitmapped images placed into Photoshop and embedded. So these are raster based images. If we zoom in, or here we go up here, we can see and we start to see the anti-aliasing around the pixels. So this is truly pixel data, not something that was drawn with a vector. So what can I do with that? Well, if I drag that into my brushes panel, for the first time, I get the ability to make it into a scatter brush, art brush, or pattern brush. So we're gonna say make it into an art brush. And now because I set an art brush, I don't want it to scale this uh, set of leaves on the end here. So I can say stretch between the guides and I can say only stretch the area that's not the leaf. In other words, stretch any of this or repeat any of this, but don't do anything weird to the leaves itself. So I click okay. And now if I go grab my brush tool, I can go in and I can make some cool new brushes using this new technique. So kind of sweet to be able to do that with, with raster images just as easily as I can do it with vector images that I would have to draw first. And this is gonna be a boon to people doing creative things quickly and easily just by using photographs as their brushes. All right, so that was number three. Well then, if that's number three, what's number four? Number four actually deals with type and typography. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, actually that was, this is number three. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select this text. And with this text selected, I'm going to go up to my font menu. And I have two places to do that, actually three places if I bring up the character panel. And uh, first of all, I can go ahead and say, show you that in the font menu, your fonts are now organized by they're groups, so you can twirl them down to get to the styles of the font to make your font menu a lot shorter. Secondly, if you go up to the type menu itself, you now have access, quick access to your recent fonts. 
So just streamlining the font menu and giving you access to your recent fonts without you having to drill down the menu every single time, that's a boon in my productivity any day. So speaking of typography, let's head over to my fourth favorite feature and we're gonna switch images for this one. I'm just gonna go over ahead and go, go over here to this different Illustrator document and I've got this text, which I can go ahead and highlight as text. And you know, when you do typography like this, you type a single word and you go in and if you wanna change the font, great, size, great. Even maybe highlight the individual characters and change those sizes, great. You can do your kerning, your tracking, that's the way it's always been. But if you wanted to manipulate the individual characters, characters themselves, perhaps rotate them, or scale them and move them apart, or, or do anything that really required the object to be separate. You'd have to break up the entire uh, word into individual frames, individual uh, text frames. Now that is no longer the case. I can go to the brand new touch type tool. And with the touch type tool, I can click on any individual character without having to separate the word out. I can go ahead and make that character smaller, bigger, and I can rotate it, I can do whatever I wanna to do to it, just as if I had put this in its own individual frame. So for example, I can uh, go here and select this one. Let's go this one actually, and make this one a little smaller and rotate that one a little bit more. And as you see, I can still have access to any one of these characters that I need to adjust. So this is the one I was on earlier, make that a little smaller and even pick it up and adjust the kerning or tracking just by moving it closer to the letter to the left. So very cool to be able to pick up and more organically adjust these characters. Now, but is it still a single word? Let's go back to our type tool and we can still highlight the entire word to make any changes that we wanna make overall. And of course, this is still selectable text. So I can say, change that to a B, change that to a U, and this can be bluffs instead of cliffs. So you got the idea, touch type, the ability to organically go in and adjust your typography without you having to break up the characters manually first into their own individual frames or type them that way to begin with. So now let's head over to number five. And this one kind of blew me away the first time I saw it. So I'm in this uh, Illustrator document, and as you can see, it's kind of mocking up what a web page or website would look like. So the, the, uh, whoever designed this even put in the uh, browser Chrome or browser frame around it. But this is all Illustrator. This is how a lot of websites start, is they you know, start off as a concept where the person goes in and draws it in Photoshop or Illustrator, and this is not HTML, this is just a drawing of what the website should look like. Once they get buy off on it, then they go and have the program or they program it in HTML code and bring in all the images and so forth and so on. And the Illustrator team figured if you're gonna do the work in Illustrator to begin with, why not help you get the styling over to the HTML automatically? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch over to my browser and in my browser, I've got an HTML page open that is unstyled. So this is all the words that make up this web page. So this is just standard HTML div tags and so forth and so on. Now it's pointing to a CSS style sheet called style CSS, which doesn't exist because I haven't made it yet. But that that's what it's looking to to style all of these attributes. So now let's head back to Illustrator. And in Illustrator, for the first time in Illustrator CC, I can go to File, Export, and I have a new format I can export out in called CSS. So I'm gonna export it to the same folder that has the main.html I have open, that has the Illustrator file that I open. It has a base CSS, but not the style CSS. So we're just gonna call it style CSS. And what that will do is give me the ability to choose how my CSS is exported, whether I'm gonna use pixels or points, whether I'm gonna uh, include the object appearances for all of those objects that are selected, what uh, prefixes I need to export for for the various browser support, so forth and so on. So I'll just click okay, and that will begin the export process 
and it's kind of done. It did it in the background. So now when I head back to the browser, all I'm going to do is refresh the page. And there it is. I was, my jaw hit the ground the first time I saw this because this is all styled. These are all, basically it brought out the images. It brought out everything to make this web page look the way it looks. Now it's not perfect. I know that in the original concept, the uh, outline type looked a little differently because it was three, uh, it looks like three different strokes. So it didn't bring that over, but look at how much more work it did for me. It did basically 99% of the work for me. And again, this is a web page. Some of this is actually scaling as I do it. So awesome technology in Illustrator CC. So those are my top five favorite features of Illustrator CC. Head over to adobe.com slash creative cloud to check it out and get your trial version or sign up for Creative Cloud so you can play with this as well. Thanks again. My name is Terry White.